you know, this trend in USB cables. And it was one of those things that's like, well, how come this didn't, how come this wasn't like this from the start? Well, there have been reversible USB cables, but they kind of sucked. And these were the first ones that I used that didn't suck. Yeah. Like, you actually so could use them. We, we tried a bunch, like, as in, like, a lot. And these are the ones that we liked the most. So what is yeah. this? You know how every single time you put a USB cable in, it's always the wrong way? Well, not with these. This way, it's always the right way. It's always way. the right way. And it doesn't, like, fit weird. It's it always, always right fits way. right. It's not the third try. <laughs> it's the first try. It's like this, like, infinite video. Yeah. Um, and so, it's also the the other side is also reversible. Yeah, which is good because like what would be the this point? one's even yeah. tougher. Yeah. So yeah, it, you're gonna save years of your life. I know. Like you're, it's already it's like the fountain of youth. Um, yeah. It's a one meter long cable. We also you know since we're ordering, we got it custom made in like this beautiful pink and purple braid. It feels yeah. great. It's got this over molding that's black good and then this like for hot pink circuit playground things to plug in. And do some circuit python. Yep. One, so it, one could say it fits solid, and then you can fit it either way. And it's it's not that much more expensive than a normal USB cable. Of course, it looks great, and uh, yeah, it's reversible. Pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know what's kind of weird is um, I'm not used to it, so I have this muscle memory. So I plugged it in and unplugged it because I'm just like, there's no way that was okay. So, anyways. Lovely. So if you if you have stuff you wanted like plug in HDMI, we got these. Okay, so now this, these you don't, I'm not reversible. So this not is kind reversible. of an interesting hack. So we have these panel mount HDMI connect, uh, cable adapters, but uh, first off, they've already have a cable attached to them. And then another thing about them is you have to cut like a rectangular hole, which you may not be able to do because kind of you need special equipment or like 3D printer and laser cutting. So um, what's nice about these is they're a round plug and I think they're like 30 millimeters diameter. Mm -hmm. And um, they're really easy to use. They have this, this capture nut, you undo it, you screw it in, it can go into plywood, it can go into anything, yeah. and then you just get two HDMI connections, one on each side, and it just it's just basically, you know, you connect one cable on one side, one cable on the other. So you can see it can be quite a thick of panel. I like that we did some slightly clear acrylic so you can see what's going on. It's slightly clear, Look but it's this. not so clear that you can't see yeah, it. Yeah, this, this was an excellent demo. This was a lot of planning. Yeah. This is, this is real. So, and then you can pop this out. Oh my goodness, they really cut the whole... They cut exactly, they cut exactly the size. Oh, sorry, it got twisted. I see what happened. There is, um... Do you want to pop it out? I'm popping out, yeah, so there you go. So, um, yeah, so you can pop it out and then, yeah, you can see it's just, it's just two pieces. Um, you screw it in, so you can have like pretty thick material. I think the measurements are on the, um, the page. What's like a half an inch at least? And yeah, it's really easy to use and uh, just has HDMI on both sides. That's it. Okay. And then you're like, well, you know, I, I want to do that with Ethernet. So. Ditto. Yeah, this is the same thing show. except it's Ethernet. So um, I'm not going to show it because it's yeah. basically identical. Don't show it. You don't need to with this nice video or nice uh, image. Yeah. Um, it's got uh, RJ45 on both sides, all the pins go through. You get um, Ethernet on one side, Ethernet on the other side. Um, you can use it with Gigabit. 100 base T, 10 base T, whatever you want, power of Ethernet. There's no electronics really inside of it, it's just wires. Um, but you just have to drill a hole. A lot of people are more likely to be able to drill a hole. And there's a nice, also a lip to the um, plug so that it kind of covers up if the hole has like burrs on it and stuff. You clean it up a little bit, but you don't have to worry about having like a perfect, beautiful uh, hole exactly the right size. It can be off by a little bit and it'll, it'll hide quite nicely. So this could be a, a, a nice uh, adaptation for people who only have hole saws or, um, drill bits. They don't have the ability to cut rectangular holes. Okay. Next up, if you always wanted a, a beagle bone, but you're like, I want a smaller one. I don't have any space. But if it's in my pocket, well, now there's pocket beagle. Um, yes, this is um, basically the, the beagle bone black, but it is a um, uh, all-in-one oct octavo, okay, octavo, I don't know exactly yeah. how to say it. They took the chip and the RAM and they put it into one package and it's even got like the like power supply stuff and everything. It's kind of all in one chip. Um, it's got, um, it's a you know, single board computer. It's very small and you're probably wondering like, why should I just get a Pi Zero? Well, there's a couple things that, that the BeagleBone has. It's quite nice. First off, it's running at a gigahertz um, and it's got 512 megabytes of RAM. So it's, it's nice and you get plenty of stuff going on there. Um, it has true USB um, 
client and USB host. So the USB connection on there right now, if you plug it in, it shows up, I think, as a, either a disk drive or an Ethernet connection. So you can SSH directly over the USB connection. It's true USB. And there's a separate USB host connection um, available that you can um, solder uh, wires to and connect the USB-A to it and um, use that to connect like Ethernet or Wi-Fi or whatever. Like, it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, but you can add a, add a USB Wi-Fi adapter as long as it has Linux drivers. Um, it also has the PRU built into it, which is pretty popular for people who need to have like precision control of GPIO. It's two, I think 200 megahertz processors in addition to the, the main processor core, there's two extra processors that can be used for precision timing. So people who want to drive NeoPixels or RGB displays or PWM signals, you know, a lot of PWMs that are like exactly um, a certain frequency or width, um, you can use those dedicated microcontrollers. You don't have to worry about like the real time uh, inabilities of Linux because it's not good at real time processing. You use the microcontrollers for that. There's examples for using the PRU. Another thing that this got, has that a lot of microcontrollers don't have is there's a ton of GPIO. You have 72 pins. I think there's 44 GPIO, um, plenty of power pins, all are 3.3 volts. It has true analog inputs. It's got ADCs built in. It also has multiple I2C, multiple UR, and multiple SPI ports. So again, a Raspberry Pi only has like one of each for the most part. You can you can enable a secondary SPI, but I don't think there's a secondary I2C. Um, and uh, it, I think there's also I2S on there. There's uh, uh, TTL displays if you'd like to add those. Um, and it has true PWM as well. So it has like a lot more, it's more microcontroller-like. Um, there's a lot of things that you might be missing from other single board link computers. This has them. Um, and of course, it's basically the same chip as the BeagleBone Black. So if you've used a larger BeagleBone, it's just a smaller, more compact uh, design. It's like the other one was a large mint tin, it's a small mint tin. Okay. Next up, we got a letter from the government, but this isn't the scary ones that I've got in the past. Um, this is from the USDA, and you're probably like, what are you all doing with the USDA? I'm growing well, cheap. I, I'm I glad, have a I'm cow. Glad we are, you know what we're growing? We're growing the future of America here. And we're pleased to announce that 4-H approved our application, which we started last year, for a special edition of Circuit Playground Express for 4-H. Now, you're probably wondering, why is this a big deal? Because we get to use a logo. And this is a very it's special not a trademark. type of, Yeah, this is a very special type of logo. And I just want to logo out because I'm, I'm, I've designed Dude. logos. I've done logos. I've worked around um, massive brands that have logos. This is a very special one that's protected by the government. That's unlike any trademark ever made. Uh, it's not a trademark. Yeah, Smokey the Bear is under this trademark. Scouts. The Boy Scouts are under awesome. this. Awesome. That's right. Different. All different. Special law. Okay. Things like the Olympics. This is a this is a super hard to get special permission trademark that you have to apply. You have to be the real deal. You have to fill out everything. You have to use a bunch of government web forms that are really complicated. And then there was a government shutdown, and that delayed things. But um, this means we have it now. This means that all those kids that are in 4-H, it's a six million youth strong organization across America. I was in 4-H You're as a kid. You were in 4-H. I raised silky. I did Sophie. Silky, it was different. Silky chickens, which are yeah. cute chickens, and I guess I've heard that people do eat them. I didn't know that. It's we had that chicken, silky chicken soup. And then there's um, these Holland lops rabbits that I that I raised. People definitely eat but rabbit. But then, but then something ate them. Um, it wasn't my fault. Um, but I wish they had electronics then. So, anyways, um, this is a big deal, and I want to show it on the overhead here, because 4-H is one of those organizations that I think you know they're normally associated with agriculture. But if you think about it, it it's grown so much beyond that. So there's solar. There's soil sensing, there's astronomy, there's learning to code, there's being a good leader in your community, there's, you name it, it has something to do with planet Earth, 4-H is part of that for young people all across the what USA. What does the 4-H stand for? Well, I don't remember. Yeah, it's, it's like, like heart, hands, yeah, I didn't know there was hope, and help. You know, sorry. I was just looking, I was just wondering. Yeah. I thought maybe you like knew, maybe it was burned into you. No, I mean, we, yeah. Head, heart, hands, health, or something. Okay. I, um, I think that's. I gotta double check it. Okay, no, it's no, but it's no big deal. Yeah. But we have this. Ho happy Holland Mobs. Happy. Um, <laughs> so, so this is so it's a big deal for us because like, 
getting getting being allowed to use a trademark like this Not, is yeah. really difficult and we're very thankful that we were able to do this and it was a year-long process and it was a year-long process very and, exciting um, it just means that more kids will hopefully be able to get this because when 4-H does their curriculum they're looking for something like circuit playground express and now it goes along with 4-H okay next up the star of the show besides the community and you lady ada is is featherwing we finally have you know we previewed this a couple weeks ago there's a little bit of a mistake with the PCBS silk screen, but now it's beautiful and ready for the store. So we have the analog devices and DigiKey Featherwing. This is like a first sensor Featherwing, which is pretty exciting. Um, and it's great, it works with any feather that you have, uh, even ones that don't exist yet, because it only uses the I2C pins. And it features the ADT7410 precision I2C temperature sensor and the ADXL343 triple axis accelerometer. We have two sensors that we have breakouts for. And now we have on a feather, we put the accelerometer uh, kind of in the center, which I kind of like. I always like the accelerometer to be in the middle. The temperature over to the right, hopefully far away from uh, the power supply, so it won't be um, heated up by that because the power supply is a little warm. Um, again, uses I squared C, comes in a beautiful DigiKey red because this is sponsored by DigiKey. And uh, yeah, pop it on any of your, your feathers. We've got code in Arduino, we got a library, and CircuitPython. So no matter what you're using, you'll be able to get sensor data into your feather and then out into the world using IoT or data logging or what have you. 